they can't stop the truth from coming out of your mouth. So what they have to do is try to discredit you to everyone that's around you. And that's why you have to detach your emotions and your attention away from what anybody thinks and feels about you. This is what is required for your next level up. And it has to be a main focus. Because when people come into agreement with what the enemy is saying about you, chances are they already wanted to believe those things about you in the first place. They were just waiting for an excuse to do it. You just have to let them believe what they want to believe about you because most of the time they don't want to change their, their mind. And this is a really difficult task for you to pull off because the righteous hate what is false, but the wicked makes themselves a stench and bring shame on themselves. It's not easy. You think everyone wants truth like you, but that's just not the case. The truth is going to irritate a lot of people's demons. They will lash out on you as a result. Do not speak in the hearing of a fool, for he will despise the wisdom of your words. Oftentimes it doesn't matter how calmly you present it or how much kindness you display to them. They just needed that false narrative to be presented to them so that they now have an excuse to do what they already wanted to do with you. You will find an unprecedented level of strength in your spirituality when you're able to detach from their feelings and their emotions about you. Because a lot of times we get trauma bonded with people and we allow their unprocessed emotions that they don't know how to deal with to be transferred onto us. And they allow this because they know that you're capable of dealing with what they don't know how to. And they'll use you for this exact purpose. And they won't love you for it. They won't appreciate you for it. In fact, the more love that you show for them, the more they will hate you for it. An unjust man is an abomination to the just. And he that is upright is an abomination to the wicked. But that does not mean that you're supposed to stop loving and doing what you're doing. That's exactly what they want. It's a trap. Love covers a multitude of sins. You have to keep living out that reality on a daily basis because that's what supercharges you and gives you more energy and gives you more life. And at the same time, that's exactly what destroys your enemies and causes them to decay. Your love is always going to weaken your enemies because they transmute your love into hate and it causes them to self-destruct. So keep allowing them to reap what they sow and do not allow yourself to get warped in to the inverse way that they operate. Because what they're trying to do is spiritually hack you and modify you. They're trying to change you in an attempt to make your heart turn cold. When you love them anyway, the enemy is gonna use even more lies, slander, false narratives about you for the purpose of transferring Satan's feelings about you into your heart. This is how Satan takes you down a notch. He infects you with these negative messages about you through people. But it's really just his message that he's trying to reach you with. He has to use a vessel. And when you meditate on the lies, you really start to believe them. It gives him power over you and allows him to take root inside of you. God's word should be used in spiritual warfare to uproot all of this. It has to happen every single day. Satan is trying to tell you how he feels about you from all angles on a daily basis. He's using almost everyone and everything in society at this point. And he will only infiltrate more people's wills and use them against you as his own dark evangelist carrying out this counterfeit message about you. He can't stop the truth from coming out of your mouth. So he has to try to discredit you and spew lies on top of the message that you bring in order to distort the truth that you've presented into the airwaves. You have to keep speaking the truth over top of it. He can only create mixture to contaminate and convolute what God is using you to output into the world, the light of the gospel. The word of God is sharp as a two-edged sword and it pierces through all of the nonsense that your enemies are trying to do to stop your progress and stop your attempts to deliver the truth. That's why you got to speak the truth every single day on top of the lies. They can't discredit God's word, so they have to attack the character of the one who is speaking the words. It's literally all that they can do because God's word 
cannot return void. It does what it was designed to do. It enlightens and awakens souls. It gets the job done every single time because it's alive and active and it always will be that way. It's eternal. It's radiating with the power of Christ. You are a carrier of the good news. You are God's investment. He's invested a lot into you. Now it is God who has made us for this very purpose and has given us the spirit as a deposit, a security deposit to secure your soul on this earth so that nothing will be able to separate your inevitable eternity with him. Your enemies can't steal the truth and the light out of you. It's an impossible task. Despite what your flesh is doing as of late or what your struggles are, the Holy Spirit cannot be extracted out of you. Not death, life, angels, demons, present, future, powers, height, depth, or anything else in creation will ever be able to separate you from the love of God. It just cannot be done. It never will be done. See, the enemy looks pretty weak when you look at these scriptures for what they really are. These demons out here can't do a lot of things to you. You have been bought with a price. You are secured. And they can't read your mind. They don't know your thoughts. They can only give you thoughts. They can only influence your thoughts. But they can't have your thoughts read back to them. Unless you literally open your mouth and recite them back to them, they can't know your thoughts. They can only see the result of their mind control attempts based off of the words that you speak and the actions that you take. I'm not talking about prayer. The Holy Spirit empowers that environment. You choose whether you reveal your hand to the enemy or not. If you choose not to verbalize that negative thing that's circulating in your heart, that is a humongous win for you. Think of your negative words and your feelings as literal resources being donated to the enemy to build structures to oppress you with. They build fortresses in the spirit. They erect altars based off of the disobedient things that you do and say. And every new piece of toxic revelation that you give these demons is like a cog in a wheel being inserted into their strategy to destroy you. You're helping them with your negative words. Or at the very least, you're helping them distract you. You are fortifying strongholds when you come into agreement with the enemy. That's why life and death is in the power of the tongue. You have the ability to put bricks into fortresses that are being erected against you. And the idea is for them to swarm you, to surround you and suffocate you. And when they succeed, it translates into the physical realm. That's when a series of unfortunate events happens and it feels like everything is going against you. You got tragedies, accidents, attacks taking place everywhere. But nothing and no one has the ability to possess your mind besides the Holy Spirit. And when your ways are pleasing to God, He establishes your thoughts. Your knowledge, your understanding of the truth, your faith determines how much power you carry. And I don't think you quite comprehend how powerful that you actually are. The most powerful thing to be on this planet is to be free in this matrix. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Now, what level you want to be free inside of this matrix before eternity is entirely up to you. It literally depends on how much truth you're willing to soak up on a daily basis. Will you be a sponge for life and light? Meditate on the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing through the power of Christ. That's where all of your power comes from. You got to ponder it. You got to wrestle with it. You got to marinate on it. And you got to declare it into the darkness. And gradually over time, the eyes of your understanding have been opened wider to the change that is happening on the inside of you. You may not even realize it at times, but other people around you realize it, especially your enemies. They're taking mental notes of your elevation and their demons start to exercise their will against you even further. You became born again. You started from scratch as a literally a blank canvas. New creation, blank canvas. Behold, he does a new thing. Now, Christ gets to color you in with his radiant light, and he covers all the colors on the entire spectrum. And despite your shortcomings, you have become a conduit of eternity. It's in you. They cannot separate you from Christ. He pulsates and he radiates off of you, even when you feel like and you talk like your old self. You are fused together with the truth. You and Christ, him and you, Christ and the Father, Father and Christ. Nothing can be separated. You are connected through streams of living water to the literal throne room. 
You are seated in heavenly places, meaning heaven is beaming down on you, in you, through you, and out of you. And once your mind catches up with what has already taken place in you and what is growing in you, the enemy will start to recognize that he or she can't separate you from God because no one can snatch you out of his hand. But you always have a choice to walk away. And you're most vulnerable to doing that when you're in your newborn baby in childlike phases on that milk instead of that solid food. Because remember, you became born again. So you literally restarted your life as a child. But believe it or not, you have grown up a lot more than you even realize. You may waver sometimes, but your faith is ultimately too strong for the enemy. God has done too much good work in you. That cannot be undone and it never will be. You are upper echelon now and you will speak the truth until the day that you die from this physical body. You're here to stay and you're locked in with Christ for the long haul. He is your security and your stability and you will never be shaken. You'll only reach the next level when you stop caring about what they're thinking about you, what they're feeling about you, and the false narratives that are circulating about you. They don't have to affect you because God knows and what he thinks about you should always supersede all of the nonsense and the curses being spoken over your name and over your life. You are an alien in this world and you were meant to be misunderstood by the world. It's part of the assignment. You can't be comfortable here. You won't be able to be completely comfortable no matter what you try to do. God literally allows the enemy to make you uncomfortable so you have this realization that this is not your home. Embrace the discomfort. Embrace being misunderstood. Don't let the lies bother you. Instead of it being a source of discouragement, let those lies being spoken about you be a reminder that they persecuted Christ so you will be treated the same. If that wasn't the case, you would not be God's child. But this is proof that you are his. And you have to renew your mind and get rid of these old thought processes, these old paradigms, this mind control and this conditioning that you were brought up in for many long years. Because comfort and approval from the world are a desire that came straight from the enemy. And they bred you this way from a young age. It's time to get that filth up out of your heart and actually embrace the persecution. It is possible to find joy in it. And it is a prerequisite of being a follower of Christ. So please, brothers and sisters, see it for what it is as a good thing.